I'm Tessa Kelly. I'm an engineer at Novart Inc., where we are hiring. Uh, we're an ed tech company helping teachers to teach uh, grammar, style, and writing. Um, if you want to follow along with the slides, hopefully you can. You can do the bit.ly link, or I don't know if you can see the URL. Cool. So I'm going to be talking about approaches for creating functional data structures in Elm by way of talking about binary trees. Um, so in order to have like clean and tidy comparisons, uh, we're going to work with a relatively limited API, which you can see here. So we're going to be exposing new, empty, member, insert, and remove. We're going to skip remove some of the time, um, but hopefully you'll still get pretty good sense. Um, cool. I'm going to be going over kind of a lot of code at uh, lightning pace. Uh, so try not to worry too much about like all of it. Just try to focus on the specific parts that I'm going to be talking about. OK. So the four different implementations um, that I'm going to be talking about can be roughly broken down into being array-based, dict-based, and tree-based. But it might be simpler to think about these in like two broad categories instead, specifically kind of an index-based approach or a, like pointer-based approach. Um, and then the array-based approach and the dict-based approach fall into that first category. So kicking things off, uh, we're going to start with the array-based approach. So this might be something that you're familiar with from creating binary trees in other contexts. But the basic idea is that you have an array, um, and you have indices in that array, and then you can derive the locations of the children um, with the formula. I don't know how good or how well those um, lines show up for you all, but the idea is that the left child of a given index um, is found at two times that index plus one, and the right child is two times that index plus two. Um, this is assuming that the binary tree that we are creating is complete, that it has uh, something at every position in the array um, up through the bottom level of leaves. So this tree that you see here, where the uh, indices are labeled, is not complete. It needs uh, something in, in the next position there. All right? Oh, cool. OK, so uh, what that means is that we have to be able to tell the difference between a position in our array where we have an actual value and a position in our array where we're kind of just taking up space, which kind of leads us to this, which uh, is not super great. Um, so we're using a maybe to distinguish between values in our array that are actual values and values in our array that signify an empty spot, an empty leaf of the tree. Um, so as we see here, it's not super terrible to create, uh, to create a version of this binary tree. Um, and then checking for values, um, it's OK. We have to use a helper so that we can always start at the, at the root node at index 0. Um, and then that kind of casing that we're doing is not super joyful. I don't know. Just, just value? Just, just, mm. And then when we get to inserting, not, not amazing. Uh, so here, these are no longer showing indices. These are values that we're putting in our tree, and we're trying to add 10 to our tree. So we have an incomplete tree, and we want to add 10 to it. All of a sudden, we need to add these empty values to like buffer out our position to get to that right child. Um, so that ends up being uh, bad now that we have to fill our array with empty space. Um, this is confusing, hard to follow, uh, filled with empties until is not great, um, and it's, it's wasteful. Um, if we were balancing our tree, maybe we wouldn't care so much about the empty space, but we're not. So uh, we need to come up with a better version of this. Um, one small thing we can do to improve this implementation is by using um, a type rather than a maybe comparable to signify our values or lack of values. It's a little bit easier to read, and it gets away from the just-just node value that we saw before. Um, but it's still not great. I still uh, wouldn't necessarily want to come to this code. Uh, so 
let's move to the next version. This is the dict-based version. Um, this is very, very similar to the array. Um, it's potentially cheating to do it this way since uh, dicts are trees um, and we're trying to create a binary tree. Um, but why not use the core data structures that you've got available to you? So this is very similar to array except um, that we don't need to worry about that empty space. So our type, our, type for, our type alias is cleaner and then our creation is cleaner. And then when we check for values, there's the casing is not a disaster. Um, inserting values is like amazingly much better. No fill until empties, none of that. No need to fill empty space. Okay, but with that, let's move on to the second broad category of approaches, the like kind of pointer-based approach. Here we're gonna more directly tie the children of a given node to the node. Um, and for the first version, we're gonna try to treat records as much like kind of the JavaScript object as we can. So we're gonna have like a value field and a left field and a right field. Um, and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, so this is our new uh, type for a binary tree. Um, note that we're using a type rather than a type alias since recursive type aliases will get expanded and uh, then you have a thing that has a thing that has a thing on it which is maybe not ideal. Um, okay, so then when we create the tree, this isn't too bad, right? We can easily create a, a binary tree with a value or just an empty binary tree. Um, when we insert values, this is also relatively clean and easy to follow. Um, and then when we remove values, uh, we can explicitly handle removing uh, a node without children, uh, with one child, with both children. Um, and I skipped covering uh, remove for the array-based implementation on purpose, and it's because this is better. This is much better. Uh, so final version. In this, we're going to simplify uh, the, the structure a little bit more. We're gonna lose the record and, and just use um, types to describe the shape of the node. Uh, so with the, with the version before this, we ended up using types, we had to. Um, but we were still more verbose than we strictly needed to be, and we didn't really get much advantage from that. So here, we have a node, a comparable with a value, and then potentially a left and right child. And so by changing the type signature a bit, um, we end up with this really clean looking code, but we can still keep our logic the same. So inserting values, uh, simple. It's much easier here to tell what's changing um, than in the other version. Like visually, uh, this is less busy and uh, easier to follow since it's very clear where things are being inserted. And then when we remove values, um, again, it's, it's really pretty easy to tell what's happening compared to some of the other versions. Uh, and easy is better than hard, I guess. Um, <laughs> so these are the implementations uh, like fully written out, including the remove version for all four of the, of the implementations that we just went over. Um, they're in order left to right. So the one on the right is the tree based with the node comparable, binary tree comparable, binary tree comparable type. Um, and as you can see, they produce different lengths of code. Not that length is the thing that matters uh, for seeing how, how maintainable code is or how readable code is. Um, but by moving away from the more JavaScripty way of doing things, by moving away from this idea of uh, the array as being uh, a reasonable way to approach this kind of data structure, by moving away from the record object thing, uh, we're able to, to approach a much cleaner and easier to follow solution. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the talk.